If you follow Elon, if you follow Tesla, there's a lot of fog, there's a lot of noise, especially on Twitter. And as a Tesla investor, I try to spend a fair bit of time researching the things that are going on. And in the last 12 to 24 hours, a lot of things have happened. So I want to get you caught up on some of the things that I'm looking at. So as you probably already know, Elon Musk posted a poll on Twitter a couple of days ago asking, should I step down as head of Twitter? I will abide by the results of this poll. 57.5% was yes, 42.5% was no. And then yesterday evening, he replied to the same poll and said, I will resign as CEO as soon as I find someone foolish enough to take the job. After that, I will just run the software and server teams. And now that Elon has confirmed the results of the poll, all I'm looking for is seeing who that person is going to be or when that person is going to come into play. Something more interesting to me, though, is that there was a space hosted yesterday by George Hotz on Twitter, and Elon Musk joined that space and spoke a little bit about the financial difficulties that Twitter has been having since he took over. However, there is a nugget that he dropped during that space, and Sawyer Merritt, shout out Sawyer, shared this with us yesterday. Yesterday. Breaking, Elon Musk says Twitter was tracking to spend $5 billion next year, but that has come down significantly due to huge cost cutting since he bought Twitter. He now thinks Twitter will be roughly cash flow break even in 2023. Employee count is now just over 2,000 versus nearly 8,000 in October. And so the signal for me is that there was a lot of fears around Twitter potentially being a huge money suck for Elon, that he was going to continue selling shares to try and prop up that business. But if his guidance is correct, then Twitter does indeed become cash flow positive next year year, then that in theory shouldn't be a problem in the future. If you want to listen to the whole conversation here on YouTube, I'll post the link in the description as well as put the thumbnail in here for you to click. On a somewhat sarcastic tweet as Earl often likes to be, shout out, that's why I like you. What's comforting is that Elon won't even entertain the idea that his behavior impacts the stock price. There's a lot of noise as I'm sure you've been following this channel and the rest of the Tesla community. A lot of folks have not been happy with the tone that Elon Musk has been taking on Twitter. And there's a lot of concerns that a lot of the recent Tesla Tesla stock price movement is because of Elon. And so Elon replied and said, maybe so, which is the first time he has admitted this, <laughs> maybe so, in which case, buying opportunity. I keep saying that Fed rate is insane because data I'm seeing says we're already in deflation. If true, then real rate of return of T-bills is roughly that of S&P 500. Very smart investor I spoke to today said he's shorting S&P. And so this is a reinforcement again that Elon doesn't think the economy is going to perform well going into next year. He's been very critical of the Fed. Now, I also don't know how I feel about him saying that, hey, a friend of mine is shorting the S&P. So does that imply other people should? <laughs> so I'm not, not going to listen to that advice. But the two things that really stick out to me from this tweet is, again, there is this reinforcement of buying opportunity, buying the dip. If you go back to the investor meeting of this year, he said very publicly, buy the dip, buy the dip. And of course, what happened? He sold some stock, a lot of noise with Twitter. So I'm not sure how much his worth there is going to be taken positively by the public. But to me, it could be a signal that says, hey, the Tesla business, we think it's fine, especially long term. And so maybe this is an extension of that confidence in the business. But of course, we have no idea what that actually looks like until we start seeing the quarterly earnings reports from Tesla for the next few quarters. And as it pertains to the Fed comment, I'm curious to see if a lot of that deflation data he's seeing is related to Tesla's supply chain. If if that's the case, Tesla's costs could be coming down, which could support some of the price decreases they've funded here in the US and in China. And so from a margin perspective, this could mean that we won't see an impact to margin. It could be flat or it could even increase, but it's tough to know until we see those quarterly earnings. And so if we continue walking down that path of noise and perhaps his behavior on Twitter is causing the stock price to fall, Dave Lee ran a poll yesterday that said, do you like Elon Musk's political tweets? It was a short duration poll. It ended with 48% yes, 26% no, and 20 percent just see the result, which basically means two thirds is yes, one third is no. However, this is a very interesting data point. Dave was running the poll and about an hour before it ended, Elon replied to the poll with a sad face and the results were 31% yes at the time and 54% no. And if you notice the timestamps right below Elon Musk at 9.32, within the same minute, as you can see here on the tweet, the results shifted from 54% no to 35% no after 30,000 votes came in in the span of less than a minute. And so what this tells me is that the Tesla community that follows Dave doesn't really like Elon's political takes, but the people that follow Elon do. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> if you're enjoying this content so far, I would love it if you throw me a like. It helps the YouTube algorithm show this to more people. Thank you very much. And there's a follow up poll on Twitter. The question is, should Elon Musk try to be more impartial and refrain from taking political sides since he is the chief umpire slash rule maker of Twitter? So far, 75% voted yes, 25% voted no with 7,200 votes into the poll. And as you've seen from the poll, I voted yes, because I do think it's important for Elon to be a little bit more neutral, especially as the face of Twitter. But it's probably important 
to be as impartial as possible, if you're trying to grow a platform to be billions of people big and to really promote free speech and feel like everybody is welcome to the platform. I had an entire discussion about this yesterday with Dave on his channel. Here's a thumbnail for it somewhere in this video, and I'll post a link for that video in the description below as well. And so obviously one of the concerns about those political tweets is that it's not just going to cause brand erosion for Elon Musk, but brand erosion for Tesla. And so one of the very unscientific ways that I'm trying to test this is I ran a poll on Twitter as broad as humanly possible. Will you consider buying a Tesla car? I didn't put any conditions on it, and I asked people to retweet it as much as humanly possible so that it leaves my bubble. 73% said yes, 17% said no, 8% not sure see results. About 35,000, 34,000 people voted on this poll in the course of 24 hours. Of course, this is still going to be a buy sample size, so take this with a grain of salt, but it's something that I'm testing within my own bubble to see how people feel about purchasing a Tesla car. Here's a follow-up poll that I ran as well. Can you currently afford a Tesla car? 50% yes, 42% no, 6,100 votes. And the initial poll was viewed by 176,000 people on Twitter, which is 0.07% of Twitter's total user base. And then lastly, this morning, there was an article from Electric that said Tesla to implement hiring freeze and new rounds of layoffs. Tesla has told employees that it is implementing a hiring freeze and confirmed that another wave of layoffs is coming next quarter. According to a source familiar with the matter, the CEO has given different reasons to different people for the layoffs, including that he has a very bad feeling about the economy. Tesla has been growing fast over the years, and that often results in hiring inefficiencies that eventually lead to rounds of layoffs like this one. And one of the things I did is I went on tesla.com slash careers to see if there was any impact or if there were any postings on the website. And there's just an endless scroll of positions. So I would encourage you to go check it out yourself. As a former employee of Tesla, Q1, Q2 were usually the periods where cuts were made, where performance was reviewed, and where folks were sat down and exited if they weren't meeting a certain standard. And as we've exited COVID and some of the bloat that may have happened with the company, this is probably just a further continuation of cleaning up the organization. And given that there's so so many openings on the career website. My gut tells me this is just a white collar behind the scenes cut for the company and not directly correlated to any sort of production capacity. And so this is a lot of data that has come in, a lot of new data that has come in in the last 24 hours to ingest to see is Tesla okay? Is the stock going to be okay long term? How's my investment thesis changed? There's so much noise right now, but it doesn't look like there's anything, at least for me, that's really cause for concern that long term that my investing thesis for Tesla is falling apart or if it's going to be in some sort of harm. And so the biggest thesis I'm looking to test is, is Tesla's growth stopping? It could slow during a recessionary period, but given my thesis of 97% of vehicles in the fleet are gas cars, and a lot of governments are really starting to push forward EV incentives, especially in the United States starting in January with the Inflation Reduction Act, I believe that Tesla's long-term prospects are very, very much in very good shape, especially if there's deflationary pressures in the supply chain which will allow Tesla to lower their costs into a recession and not necessarily take a margin hit. But do let me know what you think of these data points. What are you looking for? What are you looking at? Do you see any softness? Do you see any additional demand? Please let me know in the comments and let's use the comments to be a playground to throw around ideas and thoughts and debate them in a very healthy and respectful manner. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to support the channel, I have a Patreon. You can also support the channel by signing up through YouTube. We have a private Discord and a growing community where we discuss Tesla, Elon, Twitter, and so many other things as well. I'm super proud of the community that we're building. And if you want to join it, please consider supporting the channel. And if you'd like to support the channel by purchasing some merch like the shirt I'm wearing right now, I also have links in the description for that below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy hump day. We'll see you in the next one. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.